What's up, brother? How are you? Good to see you, my Good friend. Good to see you. Hey, uh, what have your people done? Your, your AI people with this fucking chat GPT shit. This your, scares your the fuck out of me. What it's your mean? people. What do you mean? Your, your AI people. people. <laughs> your your uh, wacky coders. What have you done? Yeah, it's super interesting. Fascinating. It, language models, I don't know if you know what those are, but that's the general uh, systems that uh, underlie chat GPT and GPT. They've been progressing over the past maybe four years aggressively. There's been a lot of development. GPT-1, GPT-2, GPT-3, uh, GPT-3.5. And Chad GPT, there's a lot of interesting technical stuff that maybe we don't want to get into. Sure, that, let's get into it. Well, there was, I'm, I'm fascinated by it. So Chad GPT is based on fundamentally on a 175 billion uh, parameter neural network that is GPT-3. And the rest is what data is it trained on and how is it trained. So you already have like a brain, mm -hmm. a giant neural network, and it's just trained in different ways. So Chad uh, GPT-3 came out about two years ago, and it was like impressive but dumb in a lot of ways. It was like you would expect as a human being for it to generate certain kinds of text, and it was like saying kind of dumb things that were off. And you're like, all right, this is really impressive, but it's not quite there. You can tell it's not intelligent. And what they did with uh, GPT 3.5 is they started adding more and different kinds of data sets there. One of them probably the smartest neural network currently is Codex, which is fine-tuned for programming. Like it was, it was uh, trained on code, on programming code. And when you train on programming code, which ChatGPT is also, you're teaching it something like reasoning because it's no longer uh, information and knowledge from the internet. It's also reasoning. You can like Logic. Even though you're looking at code, programming code is you're looking at me like, oh, what Jesus. the fuck is he talking about? No, no, but, no, no. That's not no, what I'm looking at. So, I'm looking at you like, oh my god. But reasoning is a. In order to be able to stitch together sentences that make sense, you not only need to know the facts that underlie those sentences, you also have to be able to reason. Yeah. And, and we think of it. We take it for granted as human beings that we can do some common sense reasoning, like like this war started at this date and ended at this date. Therefore, it means that. Uh, like the start and the end has a meaning. There's a temporal consistency. There's a cause and effect. All of those things are inside programming code. By the way, a lot of stuff I'm saying we still don't understand. We're like intuiting why this works so well. Really? But th these are the intuitions. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff that's not clear. So, Ch Chad, th so GPT 3.5, which Chad GPT is likely based on, there's no paper yet, so we don't know exactly the, the details, but. It was just trained on, on code and more data that's able to give it some reasoning. Then, this is really important, it was fine-tuned in a supervised way by human labeling. Small data set, but human labeling of here's what we would like this network to generate. Here's the stuff that makes sense. Here's the kind of dialogue that makes sense. Here's the kind of answers to questions that make sense. It's basically pointing this giant titanic of a neural network into the right direction that aligns with the way human beings think and talk. So it's not just using the giant wisdom of uh, Wikipedia and just, I can talk about what data sets it's trained on, but just basically the internet. It was pointed in the wrong direction. So this uh, supervised labeling allows it to point in the right direction to when it says shit, you're like, holy shit, that's pretty smart. So that, that's the alignment. And then they did uh, something really interesting is using reinforcement learning uh, based on labeling data from humans. This, that's quite a large data set. The task is the following. You have this smart GPT 3.5 thing, generate a bunch of text, and humans label which one seems the best. So ranking. Like uh, you ask it a question. Uh, for example, you could do uh, generate a joke in the style of Joe Rogan. Right, and you have a label. They have five options, and you have a label. Does it mention dick and pussy? No, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Which, I, I don't know how exactly, but uh, it. Uh, so you you get it to rank. the The human label is just over, just sitting there. There's a very large number of them. They're working full time. They're labeling the ranking of the outputs of this model, and that kind of ranking used together with a technique called reinforcement learning is able to get this thing to generate very impressive to humans output so it's not actually there's not a significant breakthrough in how much knowledge was learned 
that was already in, in GPT-3, and there was much more impressive models already trained. So it's on the way, not just OpenAI. But this kind of fine-tuning, fine it's called, by human labelers plus reinforcement learning, you start to get like like where uh, students don't have to write essays anymore in high school, yeah. where you can uh, style transfer, like I said, uh, do a uh, Louis C.K. joke in the style of Joe Rogan or Joe, Joe, Joe Rogan joke in the style of Louis C.K. and does an incredible job uh, at, at those kinds of style transfers. It can uh, more accurately query things about the different historical events, all that kind of stuff. Holy shit, man. The, the idea that you don't exactly know why it works the way it works, that, that's too close to human. That's cl too close to human thinking. Like you know what this eerily is is eerily similar to, the plot of Ex Machina, when he's talking about how he coded the brain. Do you mm -hmm. remember that that plot? The uh, that that scene. Oh, uh, that scene when he was, yeah, no. The gentleman. Know. Who's the what's the gentleman's name? The actor. That dude's badass. Really good. Really Oscar good actor. Oscar Isaac. Yeah. Isaac. Yeah. Isaac. Great casting. Isaac. He's amazing. Alex Garland, a director, Oscar Isaac. somebody I got Oscar to know. Isaac. It's He's incredible. in Star Wars and shit too. Yeah, no, the, that movie was one of it's one of my top tens. I love that movie, but that scene where he's d dis below John Wick one, two, and three. <laughs> well, three was I'm not a fan of three. Three didn't have any muscle cars. Still worse than Scent of a Woman. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> it's worse than Scent of a Woman. Which one, John Wick three or one? All Don't of say them. Him. How dare you? All of them. You ever, it's silly you ever, man movies. Yeah, you ever watch them when you're on a treadmill though? No, I Gives don't. Gives you motivation. Yeah, it's constant <laughs> action. <laughs> you ever watch them a hundred times on a treadmill? <laughs> Which apparently you have. Well, I was trying to with, win a bet. All right, you know, Rocky is better, I think, for that. Really? I'm a sucker for Rocky. The whole, the whole, all, the whole soundtrack. The, the I can't the, get over the bad fight scenes. Oh, the bad fight scenes. I yeah. can't. My disconnect, it won't allow that. Have you seen the montages recently? No. They're cheesy as hell and they still work. Because he's doing <laughs> the kind the of fitness he's doing. He's doing like pull-ups and like he's doing the silliest of stuff, even Drago. It's, it's silly. Anyway. It's <laughs> just, it's so, there's so much corny to the actual physical confrontations. Sure. 